Hey guys, my name is Lindy Cohen and I'm a dietitian, I'm a nutritionist, and these days my job is pretty great. I get to go on morning TV and talk about healthy eating and speak to hundreds of thousands of people every single day. I wrote a book called The New Nutritionist that's now a bestseller that's sold around the world, which blows my mind. My mum thinks it's really good, by the way, so there's a really good recommendation. And I have a job that I absolutely love. I get to help people with my programs called Back to Basics and Keep It Real, and I'm super busy, and I really enjoy my work. But it might seem from the outside that I'm really successful and have my shit together, um, and I guess nowadays I do, but it wasn't always this way because I wanted to quit nutrition so many times. There were so many times along the way that I just thought, this is too hard. There's not enough work. I don't get paid enough. Why did I even become a nutritionist or a dietitian? So if you are studying nutrition or if you're thinking about studying nutrition or if you're starting a career in dietetics or anything to do with health, I wanted to share some of the things I've learned because goodness knows I have learned a lot in the last eight or nine years since I have been doing this. So here goes some of the key things that I've learned. So let's start at the very beginning. I've heard it's a very good place to start. I studied a Bachelor of Nutrition and Dietetics, which is a four year degree at the University of Newcastle, and it was incredibly tough. In fact, two years in, I seriously had a bit of a mental breakdown and thought that I wanted to quit. There's just so much science in the degree. And to be honest, I'm more of a creative than I am a scientific brain. So I had to work really, really hard to stick with it. But I'm so glad that I did. By the time I graduated in 2011, there were no jobs. There were about seven jobs in the state and there were about 150 new graduates just that year. And surprise, surprise, I didn't get any of the jobs that I applied for. And so here I was having this four year degree under my belt, huge amount of student debt, and I had no job prospects. And so it got to a point where I started looking at all kinds of jobs. I looked at working in retail again, just to make ends meet. And I, I was living with my parents again after living out of home for four years, just because I couldn't afford not to. And once again, I wanted to quit nutrition, but I didn't. So what I did is I spoke to anyone and everyone who would listen. And I told them that I wanted a job in nutrition. In fact, I just wanted a job. So it turns out that I ended up getting my first job, my first break, by speaking to my dad, who spoke to a guy, who spoke to a lady who was starting a business and she needed a nutritionist. In fact, she didn't actually need a nutritionist. What she really needed was someone to do marketing and communications and having nutrition was kind of helpful. And I arrived at this job and I was fresh faced, bushy tailed and ready to start. And what I ended up doing had nothing to do with nutrition. I was working at a food company and basically my job would entail getting coffees and responding to and customers who didn't like the food. Some of them did like the food though, but many of them did not, and that was my job. I'd mail letters, I'd send emails, I'd um, communicate with graphic designers, I would organize events, and basically this job I thought at the time had nothing to do with my future career, but it turned out to be that all these skills that I thought were really unimportant are pretty much everything that I now use in my current job. But realistically, there was no way that I was going to move out of my parents' house while I was still earning this minimum wage. I was only working two to three days at this food company, so I had to do something else. There is so much work in nutrition, there's just not that many jobs. So what you've got to do is find any way to get your foot into the door. Even if it seems in the first instance that it's got nothing to do with nutrition, you've just got to weasel your way in there. And once you're in there, you can build up. This job that I ended up working at ended up becoming a proper nutrition job. I ended up doing things like health claims and looking at the back of um, food packs and, and helping the recipe developer come up with better recipes so that our customers were happy and that it was still nutritionally balanced and healthy for them. So get your foot in the door and just get any job that you can, especially when you just graduate. All right, so I was working at this job two to three days a week. It definitely wasn't paying any of my bills. Good thing I was still living at home, but if I wanted to move out of home, I had to do something else. So I ended up getting a, another job and this time I was writing emails and newsletters for a food company company. Now, this still wasn't anything to do with nutrition, but basically what I was learning is how to write content, how to send newsletters, how to do a whole lot of business admin stuff. Once again, didn't feel that relevant, but it got me paid. And then I still had an extra day of the week, which I had free. So I thought, why not start my own business? And so I told anyone who would listen, 
hey, I'd love to see clients. And one of my family friends approached me and she said, hey, I'd love to see a nutritionist. So I thought this is great. So I started seeing her one-on-one -on -one, and at the beginning, she didn't pay me money. She was a marketer, so she said to me, I'll come up with a business plan, I'll come up with a marketing thing for you if you will give me nutrition, and that's the way it works. I invested a lot of time and energy into helping this person get the best results possible, and she did. She got everything she wanted, we had really great sessions together, and basically, I built up my confidence, because when you've just finished nutrition, Sure, you've had all the theory, but you haven't really done the practical side. So you get out of university, you get out of college, and you're nervous. You feel like you don't really have the confidence that you really need to do things. So doing this one-on-one -on -one really helped me build up my confidence. It gave me a chance to hone all the skills I was learning, to develop my resources that I needed to develop, so like my initial consult, my ongoing consultation, and so bit by bit I was able to build up this database of content that I needed so that I could see patients one-on-one, -on -one. but the most important thing was that I built up my confidence. By the time I was done seeing this patient, she had such a great outcome that she ended up telling anyone and everyone who would listen. And slowly, bit by bit, my business grew by word of mouth. Suddenly new people would contact me. I think we underestimate just how important word of mouth is as a form of marketing. Marketing. It can be so useful. So any time that you see a customer, you can even just mention to them at the end, hey, listen, I am looking for new patients or clients. If there's anyone you know who might be interested in my services, then I'd really appreciate you mentioning it. Hey, and that makes someone think, oh, you know, maybe I do have this friend. People like helping people and there's no harm in just having that simple question at the end of a consultation. At this point, I had a few clients and I was feeling pretty good. My confidence was gaining. I was finally getting paid to see patients one-on-one. -on -one. And so I decided that I would take the next leap and I would rent a room. But the big problem with renting a room is that I could only afford to rent a room for that one day a week. And all my patients, they couldn't see me on this one specified time. They could see me before work, after work, on weekends but they couldn't see me on this one day. So what would happen is I'd pay all this rent to hire this room, I'd have patients, maybe they'd cancel on me, and I'd end up paying more money for that entire day's work than what I earned, and it was really disheartening. And because I'd signed the lease, I was kind of locked in for a bit of time. So once that lease finished, I just sucked it up because I had lost the money, but I gained a lot of experience. What I did next made a big difference. Instead of getting patients to come and see me, I decided I was going to be a mobile nutritionist and go and see people. And so I would drive to people, I would have my bag filled with all my resources and all the things that I needed, and I would sell it to people. I would say, it is actually a better service. You don't have to sit in traffic. I'll come to you and I can look inside your pantry so you can get really individualized one-on-one -on -one support. Meanwhile, I was saving money, so it was an absolute win for me, but I didn't need to sell it to them like that. So I gave them a reason why they should think that it was a good deal that they were getting, and it was. So this way I saved so much money and I could afford to charge my clients a little bit of extra because I was now commuting to them. And it worked out so well. So another lesson that I learned is that you have to be really flexible. You don't have to do the same business model that everyone else has done. Just because other people are hiring rooms and creating a private practice doesn't mean that you have to follow the same structure. Nutrition and dietetics is an incredibly new career. It was only developed about 80 years ago, so it's incredibly new. What I encourage you to do is be innovative, come up with new ideas, think about things in a fresh way, and that way you're gonna be really successful. By this point, it was time for me to create a website, and I did just this. I taught myself how to develop a website. I used Wix for my first website, which is really easy because you can really move everything around. It wasn't the prettiest website, but it worked. And you need to have a website if this is what you want to be doing. Even if it's just one page, people need to be able to find you online. The next thing is I started to teach myself about SEO, so search engine optimization. Now this is really important if you want to get Googled and you want to get found. What you want to be doing is thinking about the kinds of keywords that you have. So maybe it's nutritionist Sydney, like that. those are my kind of keywords when I first started. Or maybe it's healthy eating Canada. What, or maybe it is recipe developer Melbourne. Whatever your keywords are, you wanna make it easy for other people to find you when you type it in Google. And so do some research into SEO because I think that's a really great way to get ahead that most people don't even consider. 
So apart from including keywords in your content on your website, another really great way to increase your SEO is to get link backs. That's basically when you write content for someone else and at the bottom of the content, they'll provide a link to your website, to this links back. So basically Google then goes, oh, this website is getting recommended by other websites. That increases the likelihood that it is a reputable and trustworthy website. So the more link backs you can get, the better. And at this point, I thought it's probably a good idea to start working in the media. And I kind of knew that there was always a job that I wanted to be doing. So what I did is I signed up for something called Source Bottle, S-O-U-R-C-E Bottle. And in Australia, it's basically a place where journalists can go to go find expert comment from people. And so a journalist will put out a request to say, I'd love to speak to a nutritionist about this topic. And you can go, I would like to answer it. So I started doing content for really small blogs, for really small newspapers, for the kinds of stuff that only a handful of people would read. And I really didn't care about how big it was. I was just trying to hone in my skills of speaking to journalists and answering questions and doing interviews. And so when I go to a cocktail party and a friend would ask me, Ooh, what do you think about new calorie counting diet? Instead of getting annoyed because that's an annoying thing, I'm at a party, stop hitting me up for free advice. I, th I think this is a really great chance for me to practice my media skills. So I would like try to compose myself and like give myself the best possible answer that I possibly could to try and get better at those media skills. So bit by bit, I started doing more media work. And so the blogs I was doing, they got bigger. The newspapers I was doing, they, got, they became bigger newspapers until one day combined with my SEO and my media experience, I got a call from Channel 9 and they said, we'd love you to come in for an audition. I did an audition. I was terrible. I never got a call back. I totally bombed. Like honestly, it was, it was really embarrassing. It wasn't embarrassing. It was just, it was really bad. But then six months later, some other producer ended up finding me. I came in again, and then I've been doing that now for about four years. I think with media work, you've got to realize a few things. A, you've got to practice it to get good. There's no other way. You have to film yourself. You have to watch yourself back. You have to cringe. You have to like go through that whole experience so that you can actually learn how to get better. And the other thing you need to realize is that media doesn't really pay. Eventually, when you get to the very tippy top, you will probably get paid a little bit of money, either for writing an article for a really big online publication or for maybe going on TV, but it's gonna take many, many years. And even when you do get paid, it's not gonna be much of a salary at all. So if you wanna get into the media, then I think that's a really good way to do it. But realize that you need a really strong business to underpin you to be able to do that. All right, let's go back to my business. So while I'm doing this media work, I'm also seeing more and more clients. Through word of mouth and SEO and being super flexible, I was able to build up a really big client base. But the other thing I did that was really important is that I decided to get a niche. Niche, niche, I don't know, however you pronounce it, I don't care. But you've got to find a group of people that you are good at helping. Now, if you have a niche or a niche, whatever, I will travel across the city to come to you. I will wait in your wait list to get the time to see you. I will pay a premium because I believe that you're gonna be the best person to help me with my specific problem. Now, I don't think people wanna see a generalist anymore. You know, I, I see a lot of nutritionist websites and they say things like, oh, well, I can help everyone. I help people with diabetes and I help people with weight and I help people with, with their mood and their gut and athletes and I'm sure you can because we're trained to be able to help everyone. But just because you can doesn't mean that you're gonna be the best at it. Now, when you specialize, when you find your own little section to get really good at, when you make it your job to know everything about that one topic, then that's when people will wait, will pay, to see you and also you become a lot more searchable so now when people go like for me my specialty is I started off helping people with binge and emotional eating now I grew up being a binge eater um, and I have this whole story which you can watch I'll put a link to another video down below so you can go and watch that if you're curious about my binge eating history but I decided that was the topic that I knew a lot about and I was passionate about so when a patient would come in to see me about that I really wanted to talk about that topic and I was so passionate about it that I knew everything about it so I was the best person to help people with binge eating and emotional eating so whatever it is whether or not it's gut health or um, helping athletes brain health whatever it is find your niche your niche your little, little your little specialty and get really honed in on it adjust your website so that it lets the world know that this is what you are very good at 
that you become the expert on this, whether it's in your city, in your country, or in the world. So my friends, after a few years of building up my client base, of seeing clients on the weekends, before work, after work, all the time, I did start seeing people at my apartment and they did start coming into, I had a two bedroom apartment and they would come to the second bedroom and that's where I would see my patients and they just knew that's the way it worked and it worked. So you can be a little bit flexible, but I basically had too many patients to see. I had a really long wait list and it was a really great problem to have. So I decided that if I've got too many patients and I wanna help more people, then going online was a, a logical thing for me to do. So basically what I did is I created my program, Keep It Real. So with Keep It Real, I basically condensed everything you'd learn in 10 sessions with me, one-on-one, -on -one, into a video program. So that didn't matter whether or not you lived in Wagga Wagga or Woolloomooloo or Wyoming. I don't know, somewhere else with a W. It didn't matter where you lived, you could still see me and, and get that specialist support that you needed because maybe there wasn't a specialist dietitian who was near you. And so in that way, I was able to reach so many more people. And it also meant that I could grow my business and I could start getting other people in to come and help me. And it meant that I was doing the work that I really loved doing. And nowadays I have my program called Back to Basics. So Back to Basics is really about helping people who've constantly been dieting, who know how to eat healthily, but find that they just don't do it. So Back to Basics takes the guesswork out of cooking, out of exercising and just as the name suggests strips it back down to basics so it's like recipes and exercise but like so simple and I really love doing it so I've now found a way to kind of create my perfect job now I know this whole process sounds like it went very smoothly but don't get me wrong I wanted to quit multiple times along the way in fact periodically I just think this is too hard why do I do this job I have to put myself out there so much and it's a bit exhausting but I really do think that it's the people who don't end up quitting who end up just being resilient and thinking of novel ways to do different things that are the ones who end up being successful. So know that it will get hard, but just find your own little way of doing it. And I will say that ultimately you've got to use your skill sets that you're really good at. So for example, I grew up going to drama classes during the school holidays and I love writing. So for me, a lot of my work is speaking to a camera or writing. So I'm using those skills that I'm really good at. So you gotta think about what skills are you really good at? Maybe you are really good at writing. Maybe you're really good at explaining things to people. Maybe you're really good at working out the numbers and you'd be really good at sports nutrition. Or maybe you love research. Whatever it is, find that little niche, niche that you love and get into it. So one of the things I really struggle with is perfectionism. I think many of us can relate. Um, it, this job requires you to put yourself out there because you're constantly turning up and you're giving people advice and you're putting in a lot of your energy. So I think so often we can let perfection paralyze us. I know I have, especially when it comes to my Instagram. I think I really try and turn up on Instagram as like a real normal person because I'm a real normal person and I don't want people to think that I live this perfect life. And I think that that is okay as well. I think you can bring in your humanity into your work and I think that makes us more relatable because suddenly when you stop trying to be perfect, everyone else around you can relax because suddenly they realize that they don't have to pretend to be perfect either. And I think that's when we get real connection and I think that's when we do really good work. So when I first started my business, I was genuinely doing everything. I was writing the copy, doing the SEO, right, doing the website, seeing my patients, doing my books, doing the invoicing, um, everything. You get the idea. But once my business grew, I realized that actually what I needed to do is focus on the stuff that I was really good at and get really smart, brilliant people around me to do the stuff that I wasn't so good at. So that's what I do now, which is I think made my life so much more enjoyable, my work so much more uh, fulfilling. And I think my business is thriving as a result of it. So if you're newly graduated or you're looking for work experience in nutrition, then I have a very juicy blog post that I've written. I'll also link it down below and it talks about how to actually get that work experience. But a few tips for you. A, always send the person an email. Don't just send them an Instagram. That's, that's kind of lazy. Spell their name correctly. I can't tell you many emails I get calling me Lydia or Linda or, you know, Belinda, whoever I am. Um, explain to them how you are going to help them, not how they can help you. That's a very important difference. Keep it short, keep it snappy, and tell them how you are going to make their life easier, not harder. 
Anyway, so I know that's a lot of information to cover in just one little video. Go check out that blog post if you're curious because I also talk about things like salary, like how much you can charge for writing articles or going on TV or, or charge your clients. And I think that's really useful. I think as dietitians and nutritionists is ideal if we're sharing information with each other so that we can be the best that we can be so we can help people because that's what we're ultimately here to do. Anyway, if you liked this video, I'm always sharing new recipes and like healthy eating tips and ideas. I'd love if you can comment below and tell me where you're at in your nutrition journey. Feel free to subscribe, follow, check me out on my social media. I'm nude underscore nutritionist. And guys, I will see you here very soon.